Welcome to the fifth in a series of cell culture videos on storage. Today, I will be sharing some tips and tricks for storing cells that will help ensure your frozen stocks are of the highest quality. Cryopreservation of mammalian cells is a critical step in maintaining healthy and viable cells. This process can be stressful for cells due to the cryoprotectant and the low temperatures required for freezing. Therefore, it is important to have healthy cells. Before cryopreservation, cells should be in the log phase of growth, devoid of contaminants, and have high viability. Before beginning, make sure you have already prepared your freezing medium containing a cryoprotectant such as DMSO. The DMSO concentration in the medium should be between 5 to 10 percent depending on the cell line. Additionally, the medium can be either growth medium, serum, or commercially available freezing medium. Selecting the correct medium is cell line and application dependent and will need to be optimized to ensure the highest viability post-thaw. In order to determine how much freezing medium to add to the cells, you first need to determine what cell concentration and volume you would like to have in each cryogenic vial. From there, you can determine how many vials you can freeze based on your cell yields. In this example, I have 10 million cells. I will add 10 ml of my freeze medium to freeze down 10 vials at 1 million cells per vial. To ensure a single cell suspension, I will pipette up and down. Now I will aliquot my cells into the vials. Please note that the cryogenic vials are pre-labeled with all the important information, such as date, initials, cell line, pass number, and concentration. Additionally, it is best not to fill the cryogenic vials right to the top because it'll greatly increase your risk of contamination. Once the cells are aliquoted, I can begin the freezing process. Unlike thawing cells, the freezing process is a slow, controlled process. You want to give the cryoprotectant time to remove water from the cells, which reduces their chances of being damaged by the formation of ice crystals. I'll be using a specialized container that controls the rate of freeze to one degree Celsius per minute. Once the cryogenic vials are in the container, they can be placed in a minus 80 freezer overnight. After 24 hours, the cryogenic vials are ready to be transferred to a liquid nitrogen freezer for long-term storage. Avoid storing cells in the minus 80 freezer for long periods of time as this may result in cell death. When storing cells in the liquid nitrogen freezer, it is important to store the vials in the vapor, not the liquid phase. This will reduce the risk of contamination and damage to the vials during thaw. It is important to know the level of liquid nitrogen in the freezer to determine at what height the cryogenic vials should be stored. So to recap, it is best to freeze down healthy and viable cells at a controlled rate in the presence of a cryoprotectant such as DMSO. The freeze medium, cell concentration, and cryogenic vials selected will be cell line and application dependent and therefore optimization is necessary. For long-term storage, the cryogenic vials need to be stored in the vapor phase of the liquid nitrogen doer.